No, you did it. No, you did it. No, I did it. No, I'm going to be talking about the video about this amazing Magic the Gathering deck, talking about the commander, the sub commander, what's inside it to answer the question of is it worth it? Yeah, I'm going to do all of it. So let's get on to the video. So if you don't know, I am WeCJ and I make content on Magic the Gathering stuff and usually I talk about the newest decks and stuff. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the deck called Blame Game. See how smart I was with the intro? Brain, big, big brain. But we're going to do what we usually do if you have seen one of these videos before, talk about the commander. The commander of this deck is Nelly Borak Impulsive Accuser. For two red and a white, you get a legendary creature, human detective, that is a rare. She has Vigilance. Whenever Nelly Borka, Impulsive Accuser, attacks, suspect, target creature, then goad all suspected creatures. Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls dual combat damage to one or more of your opponents, you and the control of those creatures each draw a card and it is a 2-3. To be honest, this is a really weird and cool commander. When it comes to red-white commander decks or Boros, I'm not the biggest fan at all. But to be honest, I really do like this as a commander. My biggest problem is I really like a commander that can do stuff on its own. Yes, it can goad creatures. However, to get this to work the way you really want it to work, I personally think you have to focus on the second ability and put in as much goad as you possibly can into this deck so you can draw as much as you can. I do find that the ability to only goad one creature whenever it attacks, good, but in a four player game, not amazing. With every commander, there is a sub commander and the sub commander of this deck is Feather Radiant Arbiter. For red and two white, you get a legendary creature, Angel, that is a mythic. She has flying and lifelink. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell that only targets Feather Radiant Arbiter, you may choose any number of other creatures that spell will target and pay two for each of those other creatures. If you do, each of those creatures copy that spell, the copy targets that creature and is a 4-3. Now in saying this, I am not a big Feather fan. I do really like this card and this is actually one of the first Boros commanders I actually could see myself playing. Again, still not the biggest fan of it. Personally, I would be playing like big red and white creatures like dragons and angels and powering them up. Pretty much doing like a, oh, I power up like a plus two plus three to feather, which then does it to Atali. But the one thing I do know about Feather is Feather is a really good commander. A friend of mine had a really, really powerful, or still has a very, very powerful Feather deck that is one of my favorite decks of all time. And I never built it and I don't know. However, I remember playing against it and going, wow, this deck is beautifully filthy. It reminds me of the scene on V for Vendetta when he's like dancing, there's explosions everywhere. It was a beautiful deck. But now let's get onto the content itself. In this deck, you get 27 creatures, and here are some of the better creatures. Otherworldly Escort, Havoc Eater, Angel of the Ruins, Darien King of Kedjudur, Keeper of the Accord, Lauren of the Third Path, Selfless Square, Stalking Legion, Sun Titan, Windborn Muse, Agti Tarant, Brash Taunter, Atali Primal Storm, Friendish Duo, Fortier Warmogger, Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs, Vengeful Ancestor, Anya Merciless Angel, Boros Reckoner, Galissa Blade of Gold Knight, Ancient Stone Idol, Steel Hellkite. Again, I said Atali would be a great asset when it comes to this deck. There is also many other really cool cards in this deck that I can see. However, I did not think of making a deck with a bunch of 1-1 counters on it or 1-1 soldiers, mainly because the only way I can think this would be quite good is if you have, in, uh, have a somewhat small army of 1-1 human soldiers or whatever, and you play Ashnet's Altar to pay for the two for Feather. That would be a really good asset in my opinion. You literally just go, here's a bunch of 1-1s. However, I want to give all my actual like big creatures a buff. I'm going to play this on Feather, sacrifice a bunch of the soldiers to then give it to all the big creatures to attack. That's the way I would personally play it. But let's go on to the enchantments. And what is with the enchantments when it comes to the last two decks? They have a large amount of enchantments. In this deck, there is a total of 14 enchantments, but here are some of the better ones. Redemption Arc, Troubling Pairs, Hot Pursuit, Duelist Heritage, Smuggler's Share. 
To be honest, Duelist Heritage, in my opinion, is one of the best and funniest enchantments when it comes to this game. This deck has a fair few really good, really funny and very powerful enchantments. I really do like where this deck is going. This is actually the first Boros Commander deck that I'm even considering buying. When it comes to Duelist Heritage, I do find it a funny card because it works per turn and on opponents. So if a opponent is attacking someone, we'll even say for the laugh of it, with 11 commander damage, and you just go, oh yeah, I give a double strike. You didn't do a thing. Them two were attacking each other, you just pointed at a card, and that just got double strike, and now that person's out because of you, and it is so funny when that happens. Now let's go on to the instances of this deck. When it comes to this deck, there is five in total, and they are Immortal Obligation, Take the Bait, Kamu parents and deflecting palm to be honest deflecting palm and the rest are really good sorceries again when it comes to this i do find the weakest point they usually aim for rather the artifacts or the instant slash sorceries they kind of switch between those three very rarely it is the creatures and then the enchantments and then the lands are usually the worst when it comes to this but i do find that deflecting swat is such a underappreciated card it's literally like two mana and you literally just go, yeah, I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. It is such a good card and very underappreciated. You cannot have instances without sorceries. So when it comes to this, there is so many good sorceries. I'm just gonna mention all seven. So here are all seven on screen now. Prisoner's Dilemma, Mob Verdict, Promise of Loyalty, Severn's Reclamation, Winds of Wrath, Disrupt Decorum, Spectacle Showdown. Now we are getting on to the final stretch of the stuff we are going to be talking about artifacts. When it comes to artifacts there is nine in total with six of them being mana rocks and there was only two really honorable mentions and they are Ransom Note and Tomb of Legends. And again two decks in a row where you get a Planeswalker. I love when they do Planeswalker. If you didn't see the previous video I do a little rant about how I think they should slightly change how they do Planeswalkers when it comes to this deck and it might help people out when it comes to buying this stuff. But in this deck you get Elspeth Sun's Champion. And again as a Planeswalker collector if this was a alt art I would more likely buy it then I already kind of want to buy it. It's actually probably the best Boros deck I have personally seen. And now we're going on to the lands. In this deck, there is 36 in total, and here are some of my favorite lands. Slayer's Stronghold, Kern Keep, Labyrinth of Scrofix, Throne of the High City. Now again, the lands are better than the previous deck, but again, it's kind of like just not on the point i know the lands are going to be where most of the money is so if they were to put better lands in they would probably up the price a little bit more but again i find a lot when it comes to this most people would buy the deck and then put in the lands they want in even though they're not i'm not saying put the best lands in like all of that but just slightly better ones in my opinion but my overall thoughts and opinions on this deck. To be honest, out of all the Boros decks I can think of, this is a really, really good one. I do really like it. Uh, I like the fact that there is kind of two different ways to play it, but all the cards kind of work the same with it. Again, I know personally, if I wanted to build, we'll say a Feather deck, I'd be taking a chunk out to make it more work for Feather itself than the other commander. But I do like that it works either way when it comes to this. Uh, it is a really good deck and I hope they continue on doing stuff like this. But when it comes to this, I would always love to hear your thoughts and opinions, what you think, what cards would you put in the deck and all that other YouTube-y stuff. Remember to like, subscribe and watch and all of that. But as always, if you like this video, I have the previous video here, a playlist of all the Magic the Gathering Is It Worth It videos here and a subscribe button here and I will see you all in the next video.